big story of the vaccine and high hopes in particular attached to Oxford and AstraZeneca's vaccine as one of the front runners in the race. However, trials in the final stages have had to be halted after one of the volunteers fell ill. But Oxford is saying it's a routine pause and trials in India remain unaffected. Let's take a look at today's other big story. On Wednesday, the trial of one of the world's most promising vaccines was abruptly halted. AstraZeneca, the manufacturer of the Oxford vaccine, and a team of the University of Oxford decided to temporarily stop the late-stage studies. The move came after one of the volunteers developed illness during the clinical trials. The UK-based candidate was diagnosed with transverse myelitis, an inflammatory syndrome which affects the spinal cord. An independent investigation is being done to ascertain the cause of this illness. AstraZeneca described this pause as a routine action. It will restart once the UK regulatory agency gives its go-ahead. The Oxford candidate is widely seen as a potential vaccine. Top American expert Dr. Anthony Fauci called the halt unfortunate but wasn't overly worried. The news from Oxford comes even as India is set to begin trials of the vaccine candidates. The Serum Institute, which has tied up for its manufacture, said the India trials will go on as per schedule. The Indian trials have not been stopped yet and there's nothing to worry about. This is some unrelated issue that happened, um, neurological issue with the patient in the UK. And we have to wait for AstraZeneca to explain what is happening there, but this is not vaccine related. The Indian trials are also going on and that's not been stopped. The illness to a volunteer during the third and final stage of testing may be unrelated to the vaccine. That's what the vaccine makers and the world at large are hoping for. Bureau Report, India Today. So what really should we make out of a vaccine trial which has been halted at this stage? Dr. Shahid Jamil, one of the country's top virologists, joins me to get sense of this vaccine race. Dr. Jamil, your sense when uh, these reports come in that the vaccine uh, trials have been temporarily halted because one of the volunteers fell ill, is that routine? Or do you believe this is part of the problem when you try to fast forward a vaccine process? No, no, Rajdeep, this is something uh, quite normal. And in fact, uh, I am sort of, uh, I shouldn't say either surprised or happy, but I am uh, confident that the trials are being conducted properly. There are systems in place mm -hmm. that are dealing with the issue. And that's what data safety and monitoring boards uh, are supposed to be doing. So it's really good that the system is in place to catch this, even if it's happening in one person, because remember, a vaccine has to go out in a population that has people with all sort of comorbidities. So it's really important that the vaccine moves forward after proper investigation and proper safety and proper monitoring. So there's nothing to be concerned about, nothing to be worried about. Mm -hmm. It's a temporary thing. They'll figure it out and move on. The reason I'm asking you this is because there's been this huge pressure of timelines. You know, let's get a vaccine out by the end of the year. And uh, that, in a sense, does that put extra pressure, in a sense, on those conducting vaccine trials? Because normally, this process is a more elongated one. There seems to be an attempt, both by Oxford and indeed by others in this race, to crunch this process. Well, the crunch is really accepted globally now it's based on a global understanding that the trials would be compressed if the trials were done as trials were done before this then the covid vaccine would be available to us in 2033 do we want that no mm. we don't so you know it's always a risk benefit ratio we're trying to do trials so that they are done in a safe and efficacious manner yet things are speeded up and don't worry about those timelines those timelines are very artificial anyway just because uh, you know someone is going to election in november doesn't mean a vaccine should come before that 
No, no, but that's precisely you know, the worry. You know, that's precisely the worry. When the U.S. president says, I'm going to get a vaccine in by the 1st of November, you know, that sort of uh, creates expectations, uh, creates a sense of hype. Should we be tempering down the expectations a bit, you think? Should we be sort of allowing this process to go through rather than sort of seeing this as a sort of daily sort of uh, match? You know, how far have we gone? How many runs have we scored? Well, politicians will hype things, and politicians all around the world hype things. So there's nothing new. But what is really reassuring is that the medical community, the scientific community, has come together and said, we are not worried about that. We are going to do this in a right way. In fact, nine pharma companies, the big ones, mm -hmm. have all come together and, and put out a statement saying that, we will ensure that all the pro proper procedures are followed. Uh, we're not going to be swayed by any of these artificial deadlines. And that's really a very, very good move. And we must appreciate it. So, so going ahead, do you see any sort of hurdles specifically uh, from the point of view of, uh, of achieving the goals that have been set? What are the hurdles as we move ahead? Given the fact that previous vaccine processes have taken much longer, Yes. So, uh, I mean, the, I think the biggest challenge is to do the trials in a manner which is safe and the vaccine is eventually proven to be efficacious in these compressed timelines. And, and I believe uh, people around the world who are running these trials, running them independently of the developer or the manufacturer of the vaccine are doing a, a damn good job. Uh, there will be challenges. Of course, there will be challenges. Uh, uh, let me let me recall uh, what happened in 2011 for the cervical cancer vaccine in mm -hmm. India. Mm -hmm. Seven tribal girls died after being given uh, the vaccine, and th that's out of thousands. The trial was immediately stopped, and this was of a vaccine that was proven to be efficacious globally and was being used globally at that time. So yes. these things do happen. And the critical thing is to ensure that there are systems in place mm -hmm. to address these issues. Let me so ask I'm you quite reassured that what is being done is good. Right. And moving forward, things will be fine. Let me ask you in conclusion, as we see AstraZeneca, the Oxford vaccine partnership with Serum Institute, and the trials going ahead in India, you've got Bharat, Bharat Biotech also doing its own projects, a lot of American companies uh, also involved. Is there a front runner you see, or would that be unfair to position anyone as a front runner? I don't think we should see it as a race. There is no front runner. There is enough demand that anyone who comes out with an efficacious vaccine uh, will be able to uh, you know, sell their vaccine. And it's also good for the consumer because the consumer for the first time will have multiple choices mm -hmm. to go for. So I think overall, it's, it's a good thing. You've reassured us, Dr. Jamil, on a day when there was uh, an element of panic as to whether the Oxford vaccine uh, had gone horribly wrong. What you've suggested is that this is routine. And in fact, it's a good sign that the strict procedures are being followed. Appreciate your joining us, Dr. Shahid Jamil, one of India's top virologists on the big Vaccine, dare I say, race. Hello everyone, this is Rahul Kamal here. Hope you enjoyed this video. For the latest news and analysis, like and subscribe the India Today YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated.